I'm Gene Coletta, editor of the Latin America Advisor at the Inter-American Dialogue in Washington. Leftist Gustavo Petro, who takes office as Colombia's president on August 7th, has pledged to stop issuing new permits for oil exploration in the South American country. But oil makes up 40% of the country's exports and 12% of the government's revenue. Petro says new projects should be banned for environmental reasons and also to transition Colombia away from its dependence on fossil fuels. But analysts worry that such a move could be economically devastating at a time that Colombia is facing a large trade deficit and a growing national debt. Joining us to talk about Petro's plans is Ines Vezga. She's an energy attorney at law firm Holland at Night, and she joins us from Bogota. Thanks so much, Ines, for being with us today. Thanks, Ying. Thanks for having me. Now, uh, could you tell us a little more about what Petro is proposing for Colombia's oil industry? What we can say is that he will base his government on decarbonization of the country. He wants to accelerate the transition. Uh, he wants to have an economy that is not uh, dependent on oil and gas and mining. For that, uh, uh, what he has said that he's going to do is on the mining side, um, focus on small mining projects instead of great mining projects. He said that he's going to respect the existing uh, contracts. Uh, he said that he will work uh, very hard on formalization of illegal and artisanal miners. And uh, he has also said that he's going to strain uh, environmental and social control for mining activities. That's mine. Uh, in oil and gas, what he has said is that uh, he will respect the 60 contracts too, but he won't sign any new exploration agreements. And uh, he has also said that we will we would have fracking in Colombia uh, while he's the president. That's that's a summary of, of what we know so far. Right. Now, with no new oil exploration in Colombia, if he actually uh, does that, bans new permits, uh, how big of an economic hit would be uh, would that be for Colombia? No, that th this is the big question that he has to answer, and that's the problem that he will have to face. As you as you mentioned in your introduction, uh, Colombia is a very dependent country. Uh, country from from oil gas and mining resources this is our main export products our social plans depends on royalties uh, resources and uh, he's planning uh, to have a government a government with a very big social expenses so uh, we are all asking us how is he going to finance these social programs in, if he doesn't have these royalties? And there's also something that is very important and, and is that we have to keep autosufficient. We cannot uh, uh, import, or we should not import uh, gas, gasoline. So this is going to be catastrophic. Right, right. And uh, with all of the money that uh, the fossil fuels currently generate for Colombia, uh, what has Petro said in terms of how he would go about replacing all of that lost income? He has not said yet. <laughs> not on a serious matter. It seems like a big task, uh, whatever it would be, if he's trying to replace all of that, uh, all of that income. Um, he said that he's going to work on, uh, on farms, on food, uh, on on renewables, but this is not something that can substitute incomes from from uh, uh, mining or, or oil. Right now, it, it, how hard would it be for Petro to actually um, implement these plans? Promising things on the campaign trail is one thing, but then when you get to the business of governing and you have to get things passed by the Congress, uh, things sometimes get a lot harder. Um, how? Likely, do you think it is that he would be able to follow through, um, it, it, you know, with policy on the things that he's actually promised uh, in the energy sector? Well, he did not terminate the current agreement. He is he's able to uh, stop signing new agreement. That's something that he is he is legally allowed to do it. But we can, what what he can do is just stop. Uh, or terminate the, 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 the agreement because this is this will imply a 
breach of the of, of these uh, concession agreements. Our concession agreements don't have uh, a clause that allows the government to just terminate uh, an agreement for convenience reasons. So if he if he tries to do that, what he will face uh, is uh, international and local lawsuits. Right, exactly. And that's something that he uh, presumably does not want to have. Yes. <laughs> for sure. now, um, with regard to the transition away from fossil fuels and uh, toward more renewables, this is something that other Colombian presidents have, have talked about. Uh, could you tell me, uh, sort of, from your viewpoint, how important is that transition away, for, uh, away from fossil fuels for Colombia? And how much have previous governments tried to do that? And how much have they succeeded? Colombia is already in the path of decarbonization and, and in, in the path of energy transition. This is not something no one, this is not something I mean, that we are just going to start uh, based on, on petrol's uh, plans. Especially the current government has uh, worked very hard on transition. Uh, we have now the regulatory framework uh, required to develop this kind of project. We have the fiscal um, incentives to encourage investors to work on this kind of projects. Uh, currently, we have uh, many new projects uh, starting. And, and uh, this is something that we've been working on uh, in a very serious but gradual, gradual way. I mean, this is not something that you can, you, you, you cannot replace fossil fuel from one day to another. Inez, uh, thank you so much. This has uh, been great uh, chatting with you about this subject, and I'm sure the readers of the Latin America Advisor will be uh, reading your comments about the subject, uh, you know, more in uh, coming issues, too. Thank you, Jing. Thank you for having me. All right. Thanks so much. Inez Vezka, energy attorney from law firm Holland and Knight, joining us from Bogota. I'm Jean Coletta, editor of the Latin America Advisor at the Inter-American Dialogue in Washington.